Hi everyone and welcome back for another UE4 tutorial with me. Um, this video is called Animated Widgets and this was voted on by my patrons and my uh, YouTube memberships. So thank you very much for all your votes for making this video come true. Uh, so what is an animated widget? Well first of all a widget is a UI element on the screen such as a health bar, ammo counter, uh, notification, anything like that. Uh, that appears on the screen to the player. Uh, so an animated one is an animated one. So it moves or grows or changes colour or anything like that um, to emphasise uh, it on the screen. So we're going to go through how to create one of these widgets by making a simple uh, display notification. Um, so let's get started. Now the first thing we want to get uh, started with is the heads up display, uh, the HUD. So you go add new, user interface, widget blueprint. And I'm going to call it Heads Up Display UI. So this one is going to be like a sort of bucket container. So this canvas covers the whole entire screen. And we use it as sort of a container where we store and display everything else um, on it. So rather than swapping in and out different widgets, you have one that you add sub -widget widgets to. So one of these sub widgets is going to be the notification we're going to display. So we go user interface. Widget blueprint, and I'm going to call it notification UI, and I'll open this one up. So, on notification UI, we don't need a canvas panel, and that's because we don't need it to be absolute precision, we want it to be relative to its parent, and its parent's going to be the heads up display. So, the heads up display, which it has a canvas panel, so the notification UI doesn't have to have one. So, in here, we're going to put in a size box to set a standard size for our widget and I'm going to override its height and width on the right hand side here and um, we'll do 300 by 100 and then it reaches this fill screen I'm going to change it to desired so I can see the correct proportions of what I'm looking at so inside the size box I'm going to put a border in and I'm going to set a color of this border uh, so you select it and in the details panel on the right hand side you can see brush color and we can change the color of our border like so and I'm just gonna put some text in there and I'm going to uh, center it like so give it a bit of padding on the left like that and that will do it so this is our notification now I'm going to set up the animation for this notification uh, using the animations table or panel, sorry, down here in the bottom left. So, animo is blank because we haven't got any animations made for it yet. So, we click on the add animation, which is this green button here. And we can name this one what we want. So, I'm just going to call it notification. Anim. But you can have multiple animations that so could do various different things based on what's happening. Okay. So, we can do one basic one for now. And you click on the timeline tab to show the timeline for this animation. Again, it's blank because we haven't set up any tracks for it. So each animation has a number of tracks, and these tracks are properties available to us based on the widget we want to animate. So here I'm going to animate the size box. Okay. So the size box, I'm going to go add select it or click on add track and go size box. And you'll see it appear as a track like so and in there I can add a subtrack on it of whatever I like here and these usually refer to these detail panels on the right hand side here so we will see the uh, on the detail panel you see these little icons these are keyframes and these are all the ones that you can be animated so I could add the track for uh, example the transform and the transform is all about its uh, location its rotation and its scale so on its translation here, I'm going to click the little middle button to add a new key. And that will add one, if I click on the translation one and choose the new key, it will set a key for the X and the Y coordinate. Or I could focus just on X or just Y, however I look wished. So here I'm going to set the start position of my X value to be off the screen, like so. And Let's just make that a nice round number. And I'm going to move the playhead forward a bit. 
and I'm going to say up to half a second I want it to be set back at zero and you'll see it adds a new keyframe on my timeline and I can scroll it back and forth and see this animation play out um, I can keep on going so I want it to go in and then I want it to float upwards so here after two seconds I want it to float upwards I'm going to hit the new key on the Y oh, apologies we want to set a new key on the Y here as well on the uh, middle one so I set zero and then at the end we want to change the Y position to something like minus 100 like so so in the end you've got it going in and then up okay now I also want to mess about with its, uh, its opacity so its opacity I can add a new track to my size box and go to render opacity and in here we can move it to my playhead here that will do and I can click on the add new keyframe to set it as 1 and then at the end I want it to be set at 0 just make sure it sets the keyframe appropriately on your timeline so it goes in and moves up and fades away okay so here's our animation so it's quite wooden at the moment it just simply slides in and goes up now to give it a bit more dynamic feeling to it we can edit the uh, the graphs of our animation to make it look a bit more fancier so I'm going to click on this button here that says show the animation keys in the curve editor and I'm going to my transform and click on my X and this will show me the graph of that X uh, transform happening so you can see it sliding up and you can see how it works on the graph here so one thing you can do is click on this keyframe here and here you have an anchor of how it works uh, of uh, how the tangent of the line works if we just pull that up like so we now get what we call an elastic um, bounce so it goes past its original point and then it will bounce back to its original uh, where it should be so you get this effect yeah now you may want to give it a bit more of a wobble so if you want to make it a bit more of a wobble we can put it back here and hit another keyframe and here I can add the wobble like so bit too fast let's space that out a bit better like so and just pull that tangent down a little bit so you get this sort of like skimming skipping a stone effect and it'll look like it's bouncy like that or you can make it overcompensate and go below and back up yeah you can customize this however you wish okay but that's how you do little effects on the on the curve editor and there's different tools up here where you can change the curve to however you like so just to show you what these do if I just tweak this uh, keyframe here um, so here I've got just cubic interpolation using flat tangents um, here I can do cubic which allows me a bit easier to show on this one to uh, oh, cubic allows me to move the tangents independent of each other so you can get some quite weird effects the best thing to do is experiment with these and see what else uh, they look like okay click on the knee again and go back we can return to a linear one so the tangents are aligned with each other uh, linear interpolation click on this and it will just flatten out uh, out and remove the tangents constant interpolation um, don't know what that does. I've never really used it. I've only ever used linear and the uh, cubic interpolations. Over here, we can flatten the tangent. So if we want to line them up or straighten them, we can do. And you've got various zooming buttons as well here. So that's essentially all there is to it. Um, ah, that's constant. What well, constant does right? 
So we can go back to here, like so. And let's see how it looks like. Yeah, that'll do. Um, I may want to space out the wire bit on this one. So I want it to start dipping down here. Yeah, maybe a bit further out. And I can go to my render opacity. Again, I can pick these keys. Where's that doing? There you go. And just customize the animation to whatever I like. Okay. Uh, what's happened here? Change that to one. Ah, there we go. It's because I knocked it down a bit. And that's kind of it. So that's how you get the animation to actually l look good. Okay. Uh, and so you can change an anything really about the individual um, assets here. Okay. So I can click on the text block here and add that as a track. And here I can change various things about the text separately to the size box. Okay, so I can change um, its color, for example, uh, its clipping, its render, opacity again, uh, shadow, all that stuff I can do separately. So transform, I can make that sort of lag behind a little bit. Click on here. Oh, move back to the start. like that and we can move this forward a little bit and hit that so now you get a sort of oh sort of uh, oh maybe the other way make it look like it's lagging behind Yeah, you see how it like lags behind, so you can move them independently of each other. Okay, um, but I don't want that, so let's remove that, like so. Okay, so we've got the animation sorted out. So how do we actually get to actually play in the game and make it run? Okay, so in the case of this notification, I want my graph uh, to tell this to animate as soon as it's made. So in my construct event, I'm going to drag my animation, which you should see now is in the variable on the left hand side. We can drag this out, choose get. And then from there, we can just simply type in play animation. You get various settings available to yourself here. So it's a start time, how many, if you want it to loop, how many times you want it looping, uh, go forward, reverse, or ping pong back and forth, um, it's speed. So all that jazz, you can change that however you like. It's all pretty standard. You should be familiar with how to do that stuff, okay? Um, so as soon as this notification is created, this will now animate. So, on the heads up display, we want to make it show a notification. So, I'm going to go on my graph here and I'm going to create a custom event called display notification. And this notification is going to, this event sorry, is going to show that notification on our HUD. So, in here, I'm going to drag a uh, da, 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 panel and we want to drag a vertical box here and like so and my vertical box in my graph here oh sorry I have to make it editable so go is variable I'm going to change the name of it actually notification box and in the graph here we're going to drag the notification box out and we need to add a that notification widget to this notification box. So from display notification, we want to create widget. And you want to choose that notification UI that we just made. And then from there, we're going to add, oh, not, okay, from the box instead, be easier. Add child 
to vertical box and the content is going to be this widget so when we call this custom event we're cre creating a notification widget and then we're adding it to the vertical box as a child um, that will do uh, one thing that might be worthwhile doing as well on your notification UI here is on the graph editor if you drag your uh, click on your notification anim variable then right click and go add event animation and on animation finished you can from here um, remove it from widget so it deletes the widget when it's finished animating okay so we can close that back to my heads up display so when I click display notification event it's going to create the widget and add it to the vertical box so now we just need to be able to call this notification to test this working I'm going to do that my first person player um, do it here quickly put together this testing environment so I'm going to go begin play create widget uh, head up display um, add to uh, not to add to people I'm going to promote my HUD um, and then add to viewport now, typically I wouldn't do it in the player, I would do it in the game instance or the game mode or something like that, but for testing purposes, we're just putting it in the player to make it look quicker. So we've got the, the player HUD showing. We are now going to get a event, so I'm going to get N key. I'm going to push the N key on my keyboard. I want to grab my HUD. And I'm going to call that display notification event compile push play now if I hit the end key you can see that notification pops up okay and that is how you do widget animations if you have any questions or suggestions for future videos please leave a comment below and if you've done some cool stuff with your animated widgets show us in the comments below as well a link to your or video or gameplay be excellent to see what kind of stuff you're uh, doing uh, from these videos I always like seeing people's work that they're uh, making so thanks very much for watching if you haven't subscribed yet but make sure you hit that subscribe button and uh, give us a like and uh, i'll see you next time thanks very much for watching